Chatbots, life after death. Imagine you could come back to life after your death, but not in the conventional way that you might be thinking. Not with a physical body or a spirit, but in fact as a chatbot. You must be confused, and well, so are we. That's why for today's video, we're going to dive deep into Microsoft's latest idea, digital reincarnation. Are you guys excited or spooked? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of the exciting things that we post about each week. Reincarnation just reached a whole new level with these things called chatbots. Microsoft has just received the approval of their latest and probably one of their craziest ideas yet. The patent states that they are creating a chatbot based on images, voice data, social media posts, and electronic messages of a person. Well, we don't know about you guys, but this sounds like something out of a spooky sci-fi movie. However, that's just our first impression. Maybe your opinion will change once we discuss some of the details about this insane invention. With that said, let's dive into the details about this bot. Now we all know that this isn't entirely a novel idea. Tech companies before have attempted to produce something similar, but none of them have managed to perfect such a complex idea. In fact, one example of this is a chatbot created by a company called Luca. The co-founder of the company, Eugenia Coyuda, attempted to create a chatbot based on her late friend, Roman Mazurenko. Roman had died in a car accident and Eugenia used 8,000 of his messages to create a chatbot based on him. While the chatbot managed to mimic Roman, it still couldn't capture his complete personality. In fact, Eugenia herself called it a shadow of a person. Roman's family felt the same. They struggled to connect to this chatbot and said that oftentimes it answered incorrectly. However, Eugenia expressed hopes that future technology would manage to produce this in a more efficient manner. Unlike Luca's previous model, Microsoft's idea is more sophisticated with more attention to detail. The chatbot will be created based upon many different things instead of just focusing on the person's text messages. This means that they will be using images or pictures of the person that inspired the chatbot. Along with that, they will be using voice data and social media posts. Yes, even the cringy and impulsive ones. Are you guys prepared for that? All the digital information and footprints we leave behind in the world will be used to create an accurate profile of any person. Yikes. Maybe we should all be more careful about what we post online now, don't you think? Considering that they will be using voice data, the bot will also speak. Totally not prepared for someone to steal my voice even after I die. And since images are also going to be used, not only will the bot speak like you, but also will look like you. For all we know, a 2D or 3D model will be created based upon all this information. While many people have been calling this a digital reincarnation, Microsoft has yet to specify whether this chatbot will be based upon a dead person or someone who is alive. So for all we know, we might have a lookalike with the same voice and a similar personality in our own lifetime. The patent has also highlighted and emphasized that the chatbot will be imitating even the conversational style of the person it is based upon. More specifically, it'll copy the person's style, diction, tone, voice, intent, sentence or dialogue length, complexity, topic, and consistency. But what happens if the chatbot doesn't have any data? Well, then it'll collect data from the crowd and try to answer accordingly. Machine learning at its finest. But now let's talk about the thing that's probably bothering all of us. Do we have an option to opt out? How do we do that? Will our privacy be compromised for this? Unfortunately, all of these things aren't discussed in detail in the patent. Considering that it is just an idea, these questions cannot be answered in a practical context, and they will probably come up once again if Microsoft follows through and actually proceeds with the invention of this chatbot. We will all talk about this once again when Microsoft introduces a working prototype. Till then, let's hope things don't get out of hand and we don't end up in a Black Mirror episode. That would be a terrible nightmare. Do you think this chatbot could help people deal with grief? Would it make the process easier for them? Or would it make things harder? According to a grief counsellor, Elizabeth Tolliver, people might get addicted to this chatbot. She said, I'm concerned that more people would want more and more of the technology to feel closer to the person that they've lost rather than living the life they're currently alive in. She fears that it will prevent people from moving on. To be honest, that feels closer to reality. Along with Microsoft and Google, some other companies are also working on similar ideas. Google has a patent that allows them to digitally clone a person's mental attributes. 
doesn't sound too different from this idea, although it does seem more underdeveloped. However, a company in New Zealand has even more ambitious plans. They are working on creating digital humans that can recreate human interactions. Right now, our exposure to human-like AI is very limited. However, we can't predict how much things will evolve in the next 10 years. For all we know, these ideas will become normal to us and they will become a part of our daily lives. Tech really knows no boundaries and sometimes that isn't the best thing. Now it's your turn. Tell us your take on these chatbots in the comments below. We love hearing from you guys. With that said, that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching.